Hello, thanks for joining me. This is part two of a visit to the cemetery of a remote Pembrokeshire chapel. In this video, I'm going to show you the monuments which commemorate the local great and the good. There are soldiers, preachers and other local worthies. First, the preachers. This is the grave of the Reverend Morgan Jones, who died in 1835 after a busy life converting sinners, and he found very many of them in this district. He was born in 1768 in Breckenshire and worked as a farm labourer at first, but began preaching as a teenager and never looked back. A strict Calvinist and fervent evangelist, he was famous in this area. Apparently, before his influence came to bear, the young people here met together in the evenings for trifling mirth and idle conversation, but the good reverend stopped all that and a religious revival took place with emotional services where apparently much weeping prevailed and morals improved. Next to him lies the Reverend Evan Jones, who followed his example in the local chapels until, the inscription tells us, he moved to continue his ministerial labours in England, Stroud to be precise, for 17 years, before returning back here and dying in the land of his fathers. Another Morgan Jones is commemorated here. He was an army surgeon and very well travelled. His epitaph informs us he saw service in the Crimea, the Indian Mutiny and the New Zealand Rebellion. He died in 1896. At the front of the chapel is a monument which looks at first like a grave, but is in fact a First World War memorial to those who, unlike Major Morgan Jones, did not come back to die and be buried in good Welsh earth. There are six men commemorated here and their names, addresses, ages and the country in which they died and date of death are recorded here. It's typical of Welsh memorials that the address is given. There were many John Davises and Thomas Thomases, so the name of their house, farm or row of cottages helped to identify them. Their ranks are not given, but David James was a Lance Corporal who served with the 1st Battalion Welsh Guards and was the recipient of the Military Medal for Bravery. He died on the Somme and has no known grave. Now to two prominent Victorian men of the district. Councillor Lemuel Jones, JP, Magistrate and Public Servant, who we are told attended to his duties and was a faithful member of this chapel. His infant daughter is commemorated at the end of the inscription. Her date of birth is given, but strangely not her date of death. The final memorial is rather grand as befits one of the wealthiest men of the area, excluding of course the gentry who were church rather than chapel, so weren't buried here. John Owen, Esquire of Glogue, was treated to this black marble monument by his friends and admirers. However, they took their time about it. He died in 1885, but 15 years later, the Pembrokeshire County Guardian and Cardigan Reporter of 31st of March 1900 rather wryly commented, the movement to raise a fund for the purpose of erecting a monument on the grave of the late Mr. John Owen Glogue is as dead as Queen Anne. No whisper is heard about it nowadays, and it is likely to be useless to wait any longer for an awakening. The responsibility of letting the matter drop lies entirely on two or three shoulders from whom better things might be expected. Perhaps this stinging review did the trick because the memorial, however delayed, did materialise. It praises Mr Owen as a large employer of labour, indeed he was, 80 men in fact, as he owned the quarry nearby. He was also, we learn, a keen educationalist and did much to promote the welfare of this neighbourhood. The crowning effort of his life, however, was the Whitland Cardigan Railway, in the promotion of which he spent a large sum of money and laid the public under a lasting debt of gratitude. The railway, known locally as the Cardibach, did indeed bring prosperity to the neighbourhood and also significantly to Mr Owen. The railway gave him the means to distribute the slate quarried at Glogue and his profits were very much increased. The slate was used for slabs, floors, billiard tables and gravestones, though ironically not for his monument. If you enjoyed looking round this atmospheric Welsh cemetery, please see my other videos for more about the monuments here, and please give it a like and a comment. Thank you.